Welcome to Alex and Annie, the real women of vacation rentals. I'm Alex. And I'm Annie. And we are joined today with Bart Sobies, who is the founder of I Booked Online and joining us from across the pond. Welcome, Bart. Thank you very, very much. And uh, good morning. Is it across <laughs> the pond or like down and below? Like you're in Australia, right? We're, we're upside down. So yeah, so yeah, upside the image down. doesn't 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 reflect. Yeah. Um, Wait, you're in Australia? Yeah. Yeah, you I didn't, didn't know, know that. that. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I thought you were in the UK. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, well that makes sense. Why the time is so opposite? <laughs> so we asked Julie George when I think I asked Julie George this: is um, does the toilet bowl flush the other way? I, that was a question I asked her. Yeah, and I, I think it actually does. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that when you change hemispheres, it does. And that that was something that came from yeah. uh, the Simpsons back in the day, back in yeah, the 80s. Yeah, I think that's probably where I learned episodes, it. Yeah. Where he goes and flushes the toilet and it goes the other way around. Yes, I think that is a thing. Um, but go. now I'm going to need to Google it because because now I'm like, I feel like really embarrassed that the first thing I open up with is is being wrong about the toilet flushing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, well, it's okay. We didn't realize you were in Australia. Yeah, right yeah, exactly. Away, so. I did, like, completely, <laughs> completely wrong place. So not too bad. But for, for, for our audience, um, Bart, can you give a, a little bit of history on, on who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So Bart Sobies is my name. I'm the founder of I Booked Online. We started running roughly about three and a half years ago, helping people with their book direct websites and book direct strategy. Um, so kind of that real practical sense of uh, not just building a website and, and you telling us what you want, us telling you what you need for your website to get more direct bookings. Um, I started back in oh, roughly around about 10 years ago, uh, helping restaurants I do online ordering. And these were the days where people were just taking orders over the phone. Um, and we would call them up as salespeople and be like, hey, you need a website because people are going to order order their food online. And the owners would, would kind of respond and they're like, no one's going to order what? Online? They're never going to order <laughs> online. And they'll slam down the phone. They're like, no, nah, we're not interested in this. Um, and then, you know, the, the rest is history, right? So same sort of concept and philosophy where right now everyone's using the OTAs to get um to get their bookings and what we're saying is you know what a lot of people will book direct if it is done correctly so that's mm -hmm. kind of one part i'm also the host of the accommodation show uh which is a podcast for accommodation owners and managers uh and the last thing is i'm also a board member of astra which is the australian short-term rental association um where we're helping short-term rental owners and representing them that's great. It sounds like you do a lot of the same things that we do between a regular job, a podcast, board of directors, <laughs> associations. So very uh, multifaceted. I'm sure it keeps you very busy. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think the, the good thing about it is it just keeps us informed, right? We know what's yeah. going on. We can we can see what other people are doing and we're all about collaborating. And that's why I'm here and I, I want to be on this show and to get to know you, uh, both of you and your community, because I'm going to learn a lot more from you than you will from me in different stages of our of our lives and businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're excited to have you here, and you know, we uh, there's some direct booking questions that we can dive into, and I know we want to talk about Chat GPT, and I think Annie and I probably have the most questions on that, and probably our audience does also. But uh, it, it, before we get started on that, um, you know, besides doing the website for your clients, what other direct booking strategies do you uh, encourage them to participate in? Oh yeah, look, for, for me, it all depends on what size of business you actually are and where your lowest fruit lie. And what, what happens is generally, if you start to talk about direct bookings, then, then you get told that you need to do all of these things. The list is mm -hmm. extraordinary in terms of all of the systems, all the processes. You've got to post on social media every day, three times a day. You need yeah. to get onto Facebook, create an account. You need to get onto LinkedIn. You need to do this. You need to do that. And with that's with no appreciation of the fact that you might be on your own running your business. You don't have a team of people sitting there doing photos and videos and and, and and helping you with all of that. So it's all about, for, for us, it's about low hanging fruit and understanding that if you're not going to do blog posts on a regular basis that add value to your potential customers, 
don't do blog posts. Do mm-hmm. not start to do things that you're not going to achieve effectively. So when you think about direct bookings, you think about the things that you can pull off effectively. And things that you can do is you can register your Google business profile and you can optimize that. And you can do the images and you can do small little bits, which will make significant differences in terms of your discover- discoverability as a business. Um, and then you go, all right, cool. I've done my, my Google business profile. That's working. Now I'm going to get some reviews on Google because all of my reviews so far, they're just on the OTAs. So I'm going to go back to my previous customers and I'm going to send them some, some emails saying, hey, can you leave me a review? I'd really appreciate it. And that's going to start to get you ranking higher. So the first sort of foundation of everything that you do is around about ranking higher on Google and going back to previous customers, be it on email on phone and getting them to come back. And then on top of all of that, Alex, as you'll know, um, is the all the branding stuff and, and, and all that. And that's something that we kind of help with. But the foundation is all about just picking off the easy wins and making sure that you do them effectively. And that's going to start to get that ball rolling with, with the direct bookings. So essentially don't bite off more than you can chew is what you're saying. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because yeah. I mean- There's you, a lot. You, you, you guys will know, like, just the overwhelm, right? Like, mm-hmm. what what do you do next? Even running a podcast, like, what is the next thing that we need to do to promote the podcast or to make it better? Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's constant in our lives. So um, just do the bits that are going to be the easiest and most and that you know you can stick to. So don't start to to play around with Instagram for, for days and days and days when you know that you're probably not going to post. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I think also too, the social media is like very, like Alex and I've talked about, it's like social media, each part of it is very, has a very different audience. And so like, if you're not versatile, you need to focus on the audience that you know, you can speak to and, and speak to regularly and, and, and in, in the right tone of voice. Cause I think that that's, that's important too. Some people don't realize the tone of voice that they need to use for the different channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you want to know, we call it a customer avatar. Yeah. Um, or your ideal customer profile. So you want to know who your ideal guest is and really speak to those, that group or the, that those groups um, mm-hmm. with so some bad English there. But um, if you're targeting families, then speak to a family because when they, when you're communicating with them, they need to feel that it's appealing to them because if your messaging is all about romantic couples traveling and doing this stuff, but your audience, because all of your properties are these multifamily homes that they should be staying in, then you're, you've got a massive disconnect there. Right. And don't try to target too many different verticals because you'll find that the messaging doesn't make sense. Because if I'm a business traveler and I'm seeing stuff about, about families and traveling with pets and, uh, and horses or whatever else, I'm going to be like, well, this isn't for me and I'm not going to engage with the content. I'm not mm-hmm. going to come back because I'm just not interested in it. I need a place which is going to suit my particular needs at the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I think a lot of uh, companies and individuals, as they're growing, they also have to make the decision. Do you focus more on direct bookings or homeowner marketing? And because those are definitely two very different strategies there and with you know definitely different personas and outcomes. Uh, do you do anything on the homeowner marketing side or just on the guest facing side? Ah, uh, that's, uh, that's brilliant. So the number one thing that I see when I talk to property managers, especially people that are building their business is that their website is trying to do both. So they're mm-hmm. trying to get direct bookings and they're trying to speak to an owner. And this goes exactly to the last point that I was trying to say, target who you're speaking to mm-hmm. in your communication. If you want homeowners and you want them to join your platform or to join your company and you want to sign them up, then you need landing pages that speak directly to them. And the language will be, hey, uh, do you want something which is hassle-free? Do you want something which will take care of everything for you, that it's safe, secure, trusted, will make you lots of money, all those kind of messages to, to get them to fill out the inquiry form and then to potentially get them as a client. That has to be separate from what you're showing a guest because a guest does not care about the profitability of a property. A guest doesn't care about the fact that you guys do, um, you know, have great cleaning teams and all that. The guest just doesn't care about any of that. They just want to know they're going to have a great experience. So you have to separate them. They have to be two separate websites. 
um, or websites that are separated by different landing pages, but they have to be different so that then those, those, they split and they go down the funnel that they're meant to go down. And do we help with that? Absolutely. Uh, top tip for everyone, if you're getting overwhelmed by this, you can build a Google website. You can build a free website template um, and then get it going. You can go to lead pages. That's what we recommend for a lot of our clients um, because it's, all the functionality, functionality is built around, built around getting a lead um, mm -hmm. rather than a booking, right? So all of those platforms, there's loads of them out there. Uh, lead pages is what we use and we recommend to clients. Um, and then you can just put together a template and then drive people towards there. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the cart before the horse, you know, which, which one do you do first? Cause you need the homeowners to get the direct bookings. I mean, you want to have, you have to have properties to be able to even drive direct bookings, but you know, it, it's definitely a, a conundrum. I would say as you're starting to grow the business and we, we tell at Costco, our franchisees, the ones that are newer within, within this, the space, once you get the ball rolling, it, it's, it starts going on a different path than it does in those early days that the first, you know, 12 to 24 units is a, more of a challenge. But then once it's, once it's going along, you you pick up a clip. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's absolutely right. The, especially when you're building the most profitable way to get more money into the business is to add more properties, right? Mm -hmm. So once you get yeah. to that 10, 20, 30, 40 property range, but then what happens once you get past a 30 property range, then your return on investment in terms of investing in direct book, book direct strategies, it's exponential because you've got this, this depth of property to work with and you're going to get more clients and more bookings. And um, so every dollar that you spend on the marketing, you're getting a much bigger multiple uh, in terms of um, uh, earning from it. So most of the time, you always want to focus on making sure you've got lots of properties coming in. You want to be building. It's the most, the fastest way to, to get profitable. But then in terms of long term, you want to make sure that you've got the branding and book direct strategy sorted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My question was actually going backwards because you talked about in the beginning that you started out with the restaurants. How did you get into the vacation rental, short term rental space? Did you, were you, were you managing properties and then, or how did that evolve? Yeah, look, that, that's a really interesting one. So uh, Airbnb and sort of the sharing economy space is something that I've been interested and involved in for many, 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 many years uh, before even um, doing the, the restaurant and the website side of things. For me, it was more that I am a hospitality type person. I am a traveling type person. Um, I speak four languages. I've got, um, uh, you know, I've, I've lived in London. I've lived in France. I've lived in Poland. I've lived all over the world. And travel, hospitality, hotels has always been something that's has been part of my life. Um, and then from the restaurant side, it's still hospitality. Right. And you've got hotels, I've got restaurants as well. And then I just saw this need. I saw this demand for having book direct websites. And there was nothing really, there was no one doing it the way that I would do it. And by that, I mean, like us as a company, we know what it takes to get a direct booking. We know what the workflow is for someone. And if you're uh, a property manager and you're running a business, it is not your responsibility to sit there and figure out what should be on a website. That's what we should be doing because we're experts at it. And I had that skill set, knowing what people are looking for when they're going to book direct. Um, and then how do you translate that into something which is going to appeal um, to your brand and your business and your website? So that's kind of where I, I kind of slotted myself in. It was more of a, a demand thing. I, I understood okay. that there was a gap in the market. No one was really tackling uh, direct bookings as I, th I thought they should. Very cool. Okay. I just had to know. I was <laughs> trying to draw no, the no. try to draw the line for you to get there, but you're right. And I, I say that quite often to people is that it's if you have the hospitality gene, it doesn't really matter like which sector you're actually in, whether it be restaurants or it be hotels or it be vacation rentals. You just got to have it in order to mm -hmm. be successful at it and really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I think look, I think culturally as well as well, like our background is Polish, um, and I remember one time I was traveling with my dad and my sister. We had gone over to uh, to the border with Russia. This was uh, I was maybe. 12 years old and to, to what was happening is people were traveling over the border to go get 
uh, vodka and cigarettes and they'll get it in Russia and then bring it back in their car and they'll fill up the car full of these cigarettes and, and vodkas are so much cheaper. You could only bring back two bottles, but they'll find ways to kind of hide and stash all these this <laughs> vodka. And anyway, because there's so many people trying to do this trip, the queues were huge, right? So mm -hmm. we're sitting there in the car for like 12 hours, just sitting there and we start talking to people around us. We've got nothing to do. Oh, well. And then it ends up being that we get over the border at like one or two o'clock in the morning. So we've got no hotel, but nowhere to stay, nowhere to go. And there's a couple of people that were doing this trip and they were maybe in their twenties and like, come and stay with us. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so it's my dad and with his two kids, right? Like a little bit weird, but anyway, yeah. they put us up, <laughs> made the beds for us. Um, the next morning, full spread of breakfast like it was nice. insane oh, wow. like, <laughs> yeah like, true b and you know, like yeah. the, the tomatoes yeah. cut up the hams and the cheeses and just it was the unbelievable tomatoes i love that <laughs> yeah. and then so 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 from a hospitality point of view polish people are so hospitable they're like well you're in need and not only are you in need we're not just gonna do the basics we're gonna treat you as though you're one of our guests. And that's something that's been very important to me throughout my entire life. And that's how I treat my clients. That's how I treat my communities and the people that I work with is that I will put my best foot forward. Um, and that's why I like this space so much is that you have this opportunity to meet, to really uh, change people's lives through your, your own experience. Yeah, very true. absolutely. And it, and it translates to the technology, right? I mean, the experience that you're able to, you know, build throughout your websites and the communications that you you know, coach your clients on and, and how they do the email marketing and I'm sure pre-arrival emails and everything else that's part of that journey. You know, yeah. the hospitality goes through whether it's physically in person or whether it's digitally. So that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I want to switch gears here because I know we've got a lot to talk to uh, talk about and unpack and you are the expert in this. And we've been just, you know, yeah. itching to have you on the show so we can pick your brain, but we want to talk about chat GBT and just want to get your thoughts on, you know, there's a lot of um, excitement slash confusion, I think out there and, and how, people within travel are going to be able to utilize it and what it means for SEO, what it means for reservation teams, um, you know, how you get trained on it. So I'll, I'll start from there and I'll let you kind of dictate where you want to begin with it. But I mean, where, where, where do you, where do you see this taking the industry, I guess, to get started? Yeah, look, uh, so chat GPT is what we're talking about right now. And I, I just, for anybody that's watching, uh, I just want you to be aware that even if you're watching this in six months time or a year's time, we're saying chat GPT right now, but it could be a different platform. So we're talking about using AI within our businesses in general. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a bit of a catch all because AI is a thing, which is um, uh, or the natural, natural language modeling, which is happening right now is what is going to change things forever. Mm -hmm. These tools, we're going to be using them every single day in our business and absolutely everything that we do. And the faster you learn about it, the faster you'll be do using them, and then you'll be using them more effectively in everything that you do. And the one thing that I think that, that most people aren't talking about, they say, oh, well, I'll do all this work for you. I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. These tools are all about being a more effective communicator. And what it's doing is it's finding ways for you to write a better email for you to write a better social media post at scale. Um, it's going to do a better response to a review and it's mm -hmm. going to just do it better than what you probably would be able to do it. Um, and the key here is, is that because it's drawing so much data, you as a human being, you cannot scour the entire internet to find all the answers, but this tool can. And then when it's writing its response, it's got all of this information that as a human being is not possible to get. And it's giving you what it thinks is the best solution or the best answer to the, to the question. So what it will do is, for example, if you were to say, hey, um, can you, uh, I, I've got a good one. I've been uh, talking to a bank recently um, and then we've been going back and forth and they've given me a proposal in terms of uh, a resolution. And then I've gone to ChatGPT and said, hey, I'm not happy with the resolution. Can you please write what you think a good resolution would be? And it just came up with all these ideas that I just didn't have in my mind. And it's communicating back to the bank more effectively. So uh, as a catch-all, um, 
better communication, more effective communication. And then the question today is how do we use that in our short term rental business? So you, but you still, cause we've talked to some other people about this recently and I'm, I'm very weirded out by the whole thing. I just, I don't know. It feels like it feels like one of those movies we watched in the 80s and 90s where the robots were going to take over. Um, so it feels like it's happening. But you're not saying use it solely and don't interview like be it's kind of like the dynamic pricing discussion. Like you don't want to set it and forget it and let it do its thing. You have to like be an active participant in what it's giving you and and maybe edit it or decide like what's best for your for your voice, I guess. Yeah. Look, okay. hey. Absolutely. It's just kind of that first step. And I find it like it's a great, you know, when you're right, you're writing something and you put a blank page and you don't know where to get started. So you might be starting mm-hmm. a blog post. Right. Oh, I know I need to do a blog post about whatever. And you're like, I just don't know where to get started. And so you use it and you're oh, cool. Great. And you oh, can you give me some more ideas about that. So you're using it for ideas, for inspiration. And then you need to go and edit it, put it in your right. voice. You want to change it so gotcha. that it's okay. going to suit what you would normally say um and the way that you speak and make sure that it appeals to your audience because that uh, those intricacies it's not going to pick up it's not going to get uh, because it doesn't understand you that well um in even uh, the most recent versions of these tools coming out are getting better with that and look it's only a matter of time before we'll be able to get or almost get it word perfect uh, but we're not quite there yet so you do need to intervene you always have to read what's come out and make sure that that it's going to be accurate because it can also take things and have them completely inaccurate um, and then you've posted something up which 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 you wouldn't you, you wouldn't want to do and, and you're responsible for the things that you post Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But do you think, is this going to replace original thought leadership writing? I mean, I feel like, Uh yes, it can help with ideas, but at the same time, and yes, you can tweak it so that it sounds more like you, but for people that, you know, are thought leaders and are writing their own content often, I feel like it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a, you're hijacking the system to be able to use this instead of writing what's coming from from your own mind if you were to want to do that, right? Yeah, and it's it's a real tricky one because I mean the the the, the robots are learning from the other thought leaders by grabbing their ideas and their content and then smashing all yeah. back together and then and then put, pushing it back out. So it's kind of this this circular thing which is happening. So those original ideas, it's never going to be able to do because it just doesn't have them right it's it's sourcing Mm -hmm. on what's been there in the past um so uh is it going to impact writing is it going to impact everything that we do a hundred percent um i think that it's more of a time saver more than anything else but i think that Mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, look i i I can tell nowadays when i read posts and go oh that one's been written by chat gpt and that one hasn't and you can tell the difference just because Mm -hmm. I'm, i'm using it that much uh, mm-hmm. But I think that in the long run, unfortunately, I think it, it's it's going to really nail a lot of a lot of this kind of stuff. It's a lot of people are going to find it very, very hard to compete. Yeah. Do you do you when you get when you get the stuff from ChatGPT, like you give them a scenario that you need to write something for and you decide you take it and then you edit it. Do you give it back to the system to know so they know what the final result was so they learn your voice? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm just going to bring up my notes as well, because there's a few things I want to make sure that I don't miss because I, I've got some real good value value nuggets for, for, for you guys. Um, you, you can do different things. So you can have tone. Tone is incredibly important. So happy, um, you can do sad, you can do um, enticing. You can use all these different tones that you would want within, within your copy. But also you can... Um, give it a voice and by giving a voice you can say write this from the perspective of an expert write this in the tone of president (laughs) write it in the tone of a traveler from the 1800s right or in the tone of someone who's time traveled 100 years back or from thousand years ago to now you can got it you can get super creative with Mm -hmm that that the the actual um uh the point of view of the person that's actually writing it mm-hmm. which for us gets really exciting mm-hmm. because when we're writing things and when we're writing our descriptions for our properties when we're writing our blog posts if we've got a digital guide that we've left for people 
we can now get super creative and not just say, hey, well, these are the top 10 things to do in a local area. These are the top 10 things to do from the perspective of someone that would have been here 100 years ago. And then the voice, the tone and everything like that will, will change dramatically. Um, or you can target your own audience, your own avatar and say, hey, right from the perspective of why this would be awesome for uh, a couple traveling with a pet. Uh, mm-hmm. And then and then all of a sudden it's going to do that part of it for you. So um, you're, you're going back, you're, you're putting in the tones that you want and have it as a conversation with it. And we were doing some mathematical equations because you can use it to your Excel equations as well. So, you know, like when you need to move some data from I one thing that. to the other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You exactly. can go and say, hey, could you, could you please write me an equation uh, to summarize this and this? And then if the answer is yes, to copy the, the field across to another sheet, right? Because you mm-hmm. might, might have a yes, no. Uh, is this a client of ours? Yes, cool. Please move it to another sheet. So I've got a, a clean sheet there. Yeah. And then as you're going through and it gives you the equation, you go, oh, it didn't, it didn't quite work. And then it'll respond and it'll say, oh, sorry about that. Sorry that it didn't quite work. What is the error message that you got? And you go, well, this is the error message. It goes, oh, okay, cool. Now try this one. And then you try again, that still didn't work. And it goes, okay, so where did, where did we go wrong? And then you keep on going. And then after five prompts, it actually went, this is, I think this is the equation you were looking for. And they're like, yep, that's the one. Thank you. It's insane. I've got, yeah. I'm getting yeah. goosebumps talking about oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that anybody's ever had goosebumps on our show, Alex. Uh, well, that we know of, I'm sure. Well, I mean, yeah, nobody's admitted. Yes. I mean, yeah. Good point. Good point. We may sure. give everybody goosebumps, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. So, Bart, I mean, how do you, if you're somebody that is new and apprehensive about this, what is what are your best tips for how you jump in and learn it? Do you just go right to chat GBT, chat D- GPT, or are there, you know, do you watch videos first? What do you do? Yeah. So a few things. Um, one is, I think at the top, I said, don't, there's chat GPT. Google's just released their own. And there's a lot of people working on multiple formats of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of things going on in the background. So it's going to change incredibly rapidly. So it, literally what we're talking about now is going to age a little bit by the time, like within six months, you're like, oh, what? I thought we were talking about that. Yeah. The biggest thing with this is to to try it with different ideas and see what it comes up with and be patient. As of our recording date, they just released ChatGPT4 and I'm already seeing developers turn around and say, oh, it doesn't work the way that it doesn't do this. It doesn't do that. Yeah, okay, uh, wait, ask it the right questions, ask it in the right way. There's a good chance you'll figure it out, buddy. And then you'll think it's the best thing that's ever happened to you. It's the same thing. So. You might use this tool to respond to a positive review. So we will get lots of reviews all the time and we don't have the time to go through and to figure it out what we want to write as a response. And we can't be original all the time because we just don't know what we were, our brains are uh, limited. So we'll respond to a positive review. Great. It gives you the right answer. You just get the review posted in, say, hey, write a really uh, nice, nice response. Conversely, if you get a negative review, those are a lot harder to respond to. Because you've got emotion now that's, yeah. you know, you're a human being. Oh God, why do they leave me? They're wrong. They're wrong. They shouldn't, <laughs> you know, they should have known right. how to check in. They should have done this. We, we, we've got this bias. We've got this um, emotion that we're going to add to everything, the, the response that we give. Then we can use chat GPT to, 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 to generate that response. And the first answer you might get might not be the one that you want because you might find that it's too harsh. You might mm-hmm. go, can you please make this a bit more empathetic? And then it goes, oh, okay, cool. And then it might get it completely wrong and not understand the context of what it's what you've asked it to do. And it will come out with an answer that's not right. And you might go back and say, well, hold on a second. I'm running an Airbnb business. And this is a review that was written by a guest six months ago. You need to give it a bit more context. So you're constantly improving it. But to answer your question more succinctly, you want to make sure that you start to use the tool on everyday tasks that you would normally do so that you get you wrap your head around how it works, what kind of inputs you need to give it, and then you figure out what response it's going to do. And then once you've done that, you see it really working, that's when you can start to bring it into more facets of your business. Interesting. Are you able to do different tones together? So like I'm, I'm on Jasper right now. We, we've purchase that to use it for the podcast on some things, but haven't really 
gotten into it too far, but I mean, you can put in your tone of voice. Can you do more than one tone of voice or does it just take the first one that you list? No, it's, 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 it's super smart. So it will actually um, understand if you are using two different ones that uh, if they're contrary to each other, then you might run into issues. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but, you know, if you know, happy and powerful um, and presidential or whatever, and you put that all, all, put it all together and then it'll know how to use that. And the one, the one tip here is that if you find that the answer is not exactly where you wanted it to be, then you would, you would just say, Hey, you got a bit too far with the happy. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not, we're not that happy. We need it to be a little <laughs> bit more formal, please. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. the other thing for your podcasts, and uh, this is something that I haven't seen Jasper do, um, is um, emojis. So you can mm-hmm. go to chat GPT, get your text and go, Hey, can you put emojis in it? Bang, I'll do the whole thing in, in a few seconds. Oh, that's cool. Oh, Andrew, <laughs> that's Andrew McConnell will love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, back to that thought leader thing and, and the, the, the emojis. So, so, yeah, emojis are a really great one. So you can get it to, to add those in. The other, uh, I'm going to run through a few tips for people if, if that's okay with your permission. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but getting data and putting it into tables. So you might say, I want to do 30 social media posts on X topic. So 30 social media posts on um, um, the best things to do in my area. Okay. And then, Mm -hmm. and then I'll give you those 30 things. Okay. So now put that into a table and write me. uh, So you've got the ideas first and then write me 30 social media posts in the second column. In the third column, I want hashtags. In the fourth column, I want the emojis, which are associated with that idea. And then I'll just do a table for you with 30 posts. If you're clever, you can then figure out how to get all of that and put it into Canva and you can import it because Canva will import a CSV and then you create 30 social media posts. Wow. Alex? Incredible. Yeah. We're we're learning a bunch of stuff here. One more thing to add. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) One more tool we have to figure out how to use. The operative thing that I want for you guys to know as an audience is this is the limitations on what I'm telling you about is based on what my experience is with the tool. When you go out there and you start using it in your business, you're like, oh, how, why don't we try to do, try to get our spreadsheet that we've been struggling with with our owner invoices? And wouldn't it be great if we could just get those owner invoices and write a really nice summary at the end of it so that they don't have to read all the, all the numbers and stuff. It just says everything that they need to know um, at the bottom of it uh and just in a really nice positive way and then it does that summary you're like wow and you just grab that the 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 rule that you gave it and then you just do it for all your owner summaries then if you want to go even more advanced you get you build some software around it and it's it's done within minutes not days but it's limit the limit i have right now is my own creativity my own thoughts um, and what i'm reading from other people to use this kind of tool so the table thing is absolutely huge um to put things into tables i'm doing it all the time um yeah i've got other ones as well but i'll i'll let you guys jump in yeah no i i love that this is great <laughs> I love stuff that. so how how does this apply to and i've had this debate with several people but i want to get your take on it especially since you're big into direct bookings but how does this apply to the future of seo in the marketing world yeah, you can, there's, there's different people uh, thinking of it in different ways. So um, I've had countless people turn around and say, oh, you're going to get penalized for using tools like chat GPT or AI to generate your content. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been told that, you know, if you use these tools for Airbnb, that they're going to penalize you and derank you because you're using AI for it. My take on it, and I, I first of all, I don't have the answer. I don't know what Google is going to do with this stuff. I don't know what what um, what Airbnb is going to do. But from my point of view, these platforms are desperate for really great quality content mm-hmm. that people are looking for. They're looking for. They've got a question, and this is answering the question. So I'm looking for accommodation. I need to provide you with the best accommodation, with the best description, the best titles and everything like that. If it happens to be AI, which is providing the best quality content, in my view, so be it, right? Like that's that's just the, the, the way that it is. To answer the SEO thing, 100%, it's going to change things dramatically because it would just get better. 
I don't think it's going to make that much of a dent into the way everything works because it just it just means that people that didn't have great site titles will now have good site titles. Mm-hmm. If you already knew how to write a good site title, you would have been yeah. doing it anyway. Um, and now it's just a volume play. So if you've got all those images and you need to get descriptions of what's on the images, now they've got a new tool which will do that for you. So then you just yeah, that's just huge right there. Yeah, cut, yeah. yeah, that's right because we just don't do it because it's just it's boring work, right? No one wants to right. sit yeah, there. Yeah. And, Oh, here's a table. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a red table. Um, yeah. So that kind of stuff, it will change. But uh, the 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 next part of this, uh, which is for another podcast episode, is the way that <laughs> we search for things is going to change because we're not mm-hmm. we're not googling as much as we used to. We, we're using our our, our home devices. Um, yeah. We're getting our information from Instagram, from Facebook, from LinkedIn. So we're not actually physically on Google as much as we used to be. Um, so that whole dynamic will start to change in the future. I, I don't even know what, it, like I said, I'm just so overwhelmed by the fact that this can do spreadsheets now. Like my head is just spinning. I had no idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, so your average, we've talked to Mark from Boosley and he talks about like his, his customers and, and where he starts out. Do you work with just the, the someone starting out like with one unit or do you have large, you know, large organizations or just everything in between in terms of people that are in, in vacation rentals? Yeah. Look, fantastic question. So when you start your short-term rental business, then you're kind of in a bit of a, a, a a tricky place because you've got no revenue coming in. You're trying to get more property. You're trying to do all these different things at once, as right. we talked about before, you know, book direct website. That should I be focusing on now? When we're talking to a, to a client that's got between one and 10 properties, then the conversation is always, where are you going to next? And what do you plan for the business? And then mm-hmm. generally people are like, I don't know. I've just got started, but how can I know where I'm going to get, right. get to? But that's where we help to facilitate that conversation, actually. And that's a little bit of consulting is going, hey, all right, you're, you're, you're going to need to focus on this, focus on that, and then get yourself to the right scale. And then they'll come back to us and say, all right, we've got to there. At the, at the outset, you need a very strong brand um, and you want to create the infrastructure with your book direct website to get yourself going. Then with the clients that we work with, generally when you get to a certain scale where we're actually looking at kind of sub-brands, because if you put it, smash it all together and you try to create an OTA kind of experience, you need massive scale like with Pasago to make it work. Um, yeah. Or you just, you need to be an expert in just Florida. So everybody knows those are the Florida short-term rentals. So there's a massive amount of strategy in terms of how we build the websites um, and we can go, I mean, our, our biggest clients around about three, 400 properties. So we can mm-hmm. go kind of to that scale. If we're looking at enterprise, so thousand plus, it's not something that we haven't played around with too much yet. Uh, we can add a lot of value, but we don't actually build the, the end solution because it has to be so well integrated with your PMS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you, the person that's starting out, say they've got 10 units. The one of the things that Alex and I talk about and we really stress is that you know, you have to protect it. You have to build your brand. You have to be present to have that brand recognized. But so many people have given themselves over to Airbnb and they, Mm -hmm. they call themselves Airbnb. And so we had this, you know, hashtag that kind of went viral Mm -hmm. last year, not, you know, we are not Airbnb, but that people get so dependent on a channel, whether it be Airbnb or whatever, that they don't know how to pull away from it and start to build their brand. Like the, it, it becomes a dangerous, um, like hamster. It's almost like an addiction on. really. Yeah, yeah really. Exactly. They don't, and they yeah. don't know what to do. So how do you, how do you work with people? Cause I think it's those people in that 10 range that seem to be the ones that get the most addicted, but then it's like, once you're addicted, you go to 20, you go to 30, you go to 40, you go to 50. And all of a sudden you're so, you're so deep into it. Walking away from it seems like, like, you know, just giving away the keys, you know, it's just, it seems impossible. It seems impossible is the is the operating thing because I know a property manager who've done exactly what you've said. They've got mm-hmm. 200 properties, 300 properties and 500 properties. These are three individual clients in, in different areas and they've had exactly this problem. And it gets very, very difficult, especially if you're in a very competitive market mm-hmm. um, where you're competing with all the OTAs. You might be in a city, right? And in a city, there's a thousand different options of hotels and, and short-term rentals and places that you can actually stay. So building out that brand, um, there's, there's two sides. But one is that you want to make sure that it's strong, that it works, so you can get SEO. But the SEO doesn't really work because everyone's competing with you. And there's a hotel right. chain, which is just got a budget, which is just going to blow you out of the water. 
and that's the hotel chains, but then you're also talking about um, uh, the OTAs as well, right? right? So that how mm -hmm. the hotels did it, they started to build loyalty programs. Right, oh, exactly. Great. I'm going yeah. to go straight back to them. So that's a that's like a super advanced thing. And then, and then Annie, well, for, for, to, to answer your question, if you're smaller, how do you start to do it? Your communication with your guests is the number one thing and the number one Absolutely. way to get yep. them to Agree come back. Yeah. Great experiences, great experiences, great experiences. Stop thinking about the money. Stop thinking about everything else. Did they have a great time? If they had a great time, they're going to come back to you because they know you and they can know mm -hmm. you as an individual because Alex is awesome. Yeah. Or they're going to know you because your brand is awesome because you've got things that make you stand out because you have got some, um, some, some treats that you give them with your brand on them. They're like, Oh, cool. And they start to associate that brand with a good experience and, a, and, and a good time. Um, and there are lots of businesses that have built out this brand. And for you, you need to think about it at the very start and start to get that brand in there and your emails and your SMS messages and your digital yeah. guide are all things that tie together to create that brand, which is going to stick in people's minds. And that's how you get yourself more protected from the OTAs. Right. Because what happens is that as the OTAs grow, their interest is to, to their shareholders, right? That's who mm -hmm. they respond to. Not necessarily to where your business is, your struggles, your pains, your growth. Um, and if you become not profitable for them, then the business case for them should be to, to not work with you or to not help you out because they have to follow the profit. That's just yeah. a, more, no, more, of a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. More, more of a bigger thing. But customers, 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 get them, get them to love you, get them to love what you're doing. Yeah, I think the communication is so key to that so key, and yeah. is really it's, you know, some people probably look at it as it's not really that big of a thing. I mean, what your email cadence is when it, when a, you confirm a reservation and what the pre-arrival emails are and the post day. And I mean, really, you can transform how somebody's experience is with you by how you how you speak to them. And I think there's so much that can be done in that that is actually some are normally the more of the lower hanging fruit really that is you know people just jump straight to well i need to leave a bottle of wine in the property or i need to do this i need to do that mm. that's 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 you know that's in excess i think that's great to do that but at the same time you can build an experience by just doing some of the basic things too and you know we i've definitely seen that in, in my career that really just making sure that your brand is wrapped around that messaging strategy and really mapping it out i mean truly mapping it out from very beginning to the end of a guest journey and looking at those phases as you move through them, it, there's a lot of potential there. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So in our business, we've got lots of different email chains that, that we use for, for potential clients. We've got one, so we've got a Facebook group. And then when they join the group, we say, do you want a free review of your, of your website and your business? They're, yeah, great. And then what happens is they go into an email chain and we send them emails uh, on the first day, second day, third day, fifth day, one week, one month, six months, 12 months, just saying, mm -hmm. hey, you okay, that sort of thing. Right. And those emails there were written by me because I did them years ago when we first started. And I got all those emails recently. And I'm like, it's one of those things that I know I need to go back to them and look, work <laughs> on them and have a look at them and improve them because things have changed. Grab them all, pop them into chat GPT said, hey, just make these better. That was the only thing right. I said, make oh, yeah, them yeah. Better without giving yeah. me. And then, and then all of a sudden it was way better. I was like, how come how, it's, it's because it filled in holes that I didn't see. I just didn't see them because I'm a human being and I've, I wrote it myself. So I thought it was perfect, but it went, yeah. no, it's not perfect. Here's what I think. So then we rewrote all the emails. So Alex, you're hundred percent right. That communication at all those different points is important. And I think the other thing that gets missed out on is the communication in the property. Um, oh, as definitely. Well, yeah. you know, the guide, the, you know, how, what are they reading? What are they seeing? And yeah. beyond just the, 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 the layout and, and they're, they're sleeping or whatever, are we actually communicating our brand in an effective way? Yeah. A good example of this, when you check into a hotel, generally the first thing is you see the screen and now they put your name on it. Oh, hi, Bart. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to Blah yeah. Hotel. Similar type of stuff that you need to do, which creates that loyalty between you and the customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah creating the loyalty, making it feel personalized and making it easy for them. Um, one of the things that I, I love that we do at Casago, we have these QR codes that are branded as Casago within our properties. So anything that 
has, um, or, or can cause, I guess, confusion, how to turn the hot tub on or how to use the Wi-Fi or even how to use the TV remote. We put these little QR codes with it that goes to a video of us explaining how to use it. And, you know, that, that cuts down on service calls, which it's one less communication. They're not having to call us, but it's, I've been a game changer. I mean, that's so much easier for somebody to be able to easily figure out how to do something on their own, but also know that you're there, you're there with them, you know? So whether you do something like that, or you have, um, you know, in property devices, or if it's within the app that you use, just being able to provide that information so that it's easy for a guest to find. Cause the last thing they want to do when they kind of get on vacation is have to sit and think and wonder, how do I do this? And I, if I call, I'm going to have to wait forever in line. You know, it's a busy day. Nobody's going to answer my call. So just making information available within the unit is also a great, great tip. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. And I feel that, so that was something that kind of would have been done by Casago within probably the last year, a little year and a half or whatever, or maybe they're way ahead of the curve, but th that's that opportunity where once you start to do it, then you start to unpack it more and say, how do we make these videos even better rather than just right. being about the remote, but it's like, now how do we make them funny? How do I put our brand into it? How do we create that, that extra, the magic sprinkle um, onto the experience? Uh, to really make you stand uh, stand out and shine. So um, uh, yeah, hundred like each of those times, Alex, you've got that opportunity to yeah. talk to your to your guests. So how do we do that in a really good way? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. We've been talking to, um, and I'm sure you see her on LinkedIn, Lauren Madewell from Antebellum. She's in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and she did some stuff like that. But she she did them because she knew she knew her avatar. She knew it was families and nine out of 10 times they had kids. So she's made all these videos, very fun. She's dressed in a bear suit. Like the comedy yeah. of it is there. <laughs> and so like, she was talking about like, she communicates to the guests before they even arrive. So they don't have any questions because she's told them what the check-in procedure is. She even tells them before they leave what the checkout procedure is, but in a really fun way. So like the kids want to watch it. The kids want to know like, well, how can I help? Well, the bear said, I need to take the garbage out. So I'm going to take the garbage out. So, you know, like I, being creative is great. And I think, you know, to your point about like using you going back and redoing your emails, it's like you have to iterate over time because the, mm -hmm. the way you speak to customers, it changes. I mean, it used to be 10 years ago, you would never have put a QR code in a room and not sent a person to the room. I mean, oh, that yeah. just wouldn't have been yeah. acceptable. But now, yeah. you know, I think COVID advanced that movement of like, it's okay. I don't have to see somebody the whole time, which I think from the hotel perspective, they probably didn't like that very much because they they thought their game, you know, the way they win the game was like, well, we have people, we can send all these people to solve these problems, but the technology is faster and advances faster. And, and wor workforce too. You yeah. Know, and, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, lo a lot of great things that technology has done for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whenever you're thinking about these things, always think about the experience and we can we can bring in these tools, we can bring in these different things, but is it making it better for people or is it creating a little, a little bit more friction? So always yeah. put yourself in their shoes and say, is this actually nice? Is this a good experience or is this a yeah. bit, you know, we're being a bit cheap here by not having someone there or, or that sort of thing. How do we make it special and how do we make it feel uh, amazing? Because people are so excited for their trips. They're so excited yeah. to check in yeah. so you can leverage, leverage that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to tie that up. No, yeah, great. No, great point. <laughs> awesome. we, we appreciate you coming in and I guess getting up really early in Australia to, to talk with us. And hopefully, uh, will, will we see you at any conferences in the US this year? We talked about probably for sure international, right? Burma, Burma International? Yeah, so I'll definitely be at Burma. Um, there's a few little uh, ideas that I have right now. It just depends on my schedule. I might make it over for the Northwest Vacation Rental Managers. Is it? That'd be so great because we're going to be there. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> we're really excited yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, I think there's a lot. And one of the things that I think we've talked about is Alex and I kind of the underlying mission of why we're doing this is we wanted to tell stories, but we wanted to educate. And what we found is so many of our, the, our listeners are actually people who have just started in the business or want to get into the business. Mm -hmm. I've been mm -hmm. inundated as of late because um, I'm hiring at work. And so there's a lot of people that are trying to reach out to me, but a lot of them are realtors and people who don't know much about the industry, but they want to learn. And so they've said, into, you know, they came across our podcast and they really appreciate the education. So I think what you just provided was a really great, um, you know, great insight on a tool that, you know, again, I'm a little freaked out by it. I I'm open to to trying it for sure. Um, but we need to continue to 
present these options for operators so that they can build their brand and drive their bookings directly instead of using channels and being beholden to one channel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did, we did, uh, I, uh, on that, we did an event, uh, that I was thinking about in November, December, we launched it in January where we did a five day challenge to get people, uh, up to speed with AI. Uh, and we found that people during that challenge by day two, they were going through and changing their descriptions and titles. And we had people coming back saying, Oh my God, I got three book- three bookings overnight on that one. Wow. Company wow. Based so, on those changes. Yeah. so, so if anyone is interested in that, uh, I booked online, I booked dot online for slash AI. And then you can follow that and maybe yes, can put the link in the show notes um, and then you'll be able to get access to um, that, that five-day challenge to get yourself up to speed. And, and the last thing I really want to encourage everyone, if you're listening to this and you think, oh, this is great, this is great. If you're running a business with any kind of team, they need to be using this. It'll save you so much time, so much effort. All of our team has been trained on this. They write yeah. customer emails with the help of these tools. So make sure that you get yourself just get yourself trained up, spend a little bit of time on it. The payoff is huge. Yeah. Great. Well, we, we love that. And um, Bart, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, that they want to hear more about how to learn chat GBT or about other book direct strategies, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah. So look, um, follow the accommodation show, uh, great podcast with lots of great guests. Uh, I booked dot online for such AI for all of the AI, AI stuff. Or if you want a, a website, just drop the AI and it's iBooked.online. You can always reach out to me. Um, I'm everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> email me. It doesn't really matter. I'm very contactable. Um, or uh, or if it's more appropriate, I'll put you into one, onto one of my team who are experts as well. So well, thank you so much again for coming on today. If anybody wants to contact Annie and I, you can go to alexandanniepodcast.com. And if you're enjoying the show, we'd love to hear from you. If you can leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcast, we would greatly appreciate it. But until next time, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks, everybody. You guys are awesome. Thank you.